um, and just welcome everybody to to the bog meeting uh, our first bog meeting of the year new year kind of a new era in many ways including for the bog um, with uh, you know we're we'll talk about it more later but uh, we're it's going to be a busy year we're going to be doing a lot of our normal work plus the realignment work and uh, with the added activity we'll be having quarterly meetings uh, on a on a firm schedule so um, looking forward to to getting started with it um, I want to start as we usually do with a roll call um, and Anna came up with a good mechanism for doing this um, and I can't see the participant list when I'm presenting because I only have one screen but uh, Anna is going to let me any comments in the comments from the participants in the chat or any any hands up or anything um, but we'll go through the order uh, uh, the the roll call in the order here um, are there any peer review panel members on the call okay I wasn't I didn't specifically invite them so that's that's uh, I would have been a little surprised if they were on the call um, EPA. Do you see Terry in the list, Anna? I do not. All right. Um, Oeha. Susan Plazing. Wes Smith. Smith. Great. So just the two of you. And Lori Chumney and Wes Smith. Right. Okay. So yeah. three, three total. So we just letting you know. I did hear you. <laughs> Um, Moss Landing. Yeah, I heard Marco. What was that? Who was it? Who else? Gary Ichikawa and Autumn Bonama. Billy Jekyll. Scott Lucas. Okay. All right. April Gimenez. Okay, so got six people from Moss Landing. Jay, I just saw Terry. Oh, okay. Terry Fleming, are you on? C. Si. All right, welcome. Okay, uh, we're just doing roll call. Uh, so regional boards, region one. Yeah, Rich Fadness. Region two. Carrie Austin. Region three. Melissa Doherty. Region four. Emily Duncan. Region and five. Alexander Prescott. Great. Uh, region five. Lauren Smitherman. Jordan Hensley. Robin Murad. So region five. Uh, has the strongest representation so far. Region six. Uh, do you see Kelly or anybody from region six? I don't. Okay. Uh, region seven. I heard some noise, but no. No name. Uh, no. Okay. Region eight. Heather Boyd. Great. Region nine. Chad Laughlin. Okay. Um, State board. Nick. Bev Martino. Anderson's here. So we have Bev and Nick. Ross Cooper. Devin Burke. Bernie. All right. Um, great. And of course, Anna and Greg will be joining us a little later. I presume. 
Okay, so and then uh, the other category, um, it would take too long to work our way through the other folks that are on the call. Um, so just please add your name and affiliation into the chat box and we'll record that. You know, re make sure your name shows up in the in the meeting summary. Okay. Um, just circling back, did I miss anybody from any of the groups that are on the screen? Train fan just joined from a weeha. Okay, great. Okay. Well, let's uh, review the agenda quickly. Um, so we have a, a, a busy, busy three hours here um, with a bunch of items. Um, We'll do the usual quick updates. Um, I'll I'll uh, review the, the 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 final steps on the sample for 2021. Um, one of the more substantive things on the agenda today is talking about the plan for 2022, um, which requires some discussion and prioritization. Um, then we'll get an update on AB 762 from Greg Gearhart. Anna's going to give an update on the realignment. Jennifer's going to um, talk about prioritizing our tissue data, and then we'll have some updates on the on the website. Um, so it's going to be action packed. Um, does anybody have any uh, concerns or need to leave early that we should know about? Okay. So let's uh, go get into the quick updates. Um, so this is kind of a standard list of items that you know that that uh, we report on and just go through them. So the 2016 Lakes data report is still not completed. I was um, back when we met in November. I thought I might be able to have it by this meeting, but um, was pulled into other other projects and wasn't able to do that. So I'm aiming for the next meeting for that, for the draft report. Um, and then we'll talk about 2019 data more later in the meeting, um, but we're um, waiting for the word that those data are all ready to go. Um, and I'm anticipating having a draft report on that in either the third or fourth quarter this year. Um, Information from another program, the word SFEI is working on the draft report on the 2019 fish monitoring. Um, we usually would have had this done earlier, but there were some long delays last year due to COVID. Uh, but we're currently working on the draft to have that ready by the end of February. Um, if anybody's not in the loop on our Bay RMP fish, um, communications, email communications, and is interested in reviewing that report, um, please let me know. Just uh, send me an email um, and I can include you. I um, want to give an update on the, the fish collection permit, which was a major topic of discussion at our last meeting. And part of the reason that we were um, trying to accelerate our planning for 2021 and 22 and 23, um, and uh, um, basically the uh, um, Moss Landing took the information we had in December and went ahead and submitted the permit application. Um, so uh, the it's kind of, we, you know we we had started talking about the plans for 22 and 23 and trying to nail those down and got, you know, did did move things along, um, especially on the 23 plan. Um, but Moss Landing took what we had and ran with it. So the urgency on um, getting detail, more detail on 22 um, uh, um, was uh, eliminated because the permit was, uh, the application was submitted. Um, Autumn, do you, is there anything you want to add on that? Um, I would just say that the urgency isn't eliminated, 
but it is lessened. Um, we still have the ability to go and amend. Um, it's always easier to not do things than it is to try to get an amendment in. So the more time we have to work with something, the better. Right. Thanks for the help on the word choice there. <laughs> Um, and we will, uh, the plan for 22 is a major topic for discussion today, so we'll be moving that along. Um, hey, Jay, before you go to the next item, um, Carrie Austin asked if the 2016 Lakes data report will be distributed for review, or will the final version be distributed at the next BOG meeting? That would be a draft for review, because you guys haven't seen it yet. Great, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, safe to eat portal. We're gonna have an update on the website in general. Um, uh, is there anything later in the agenda? Um, uh, uh, Anna, is there anything else you wanna add at this point? Uh, no, we're just working with SFEI. We're transitioning the safety portal um, to water board staff. And so SFEI is working on all that, the getting all the goodies together. Um, and that, you know, project will take uh, quite a few months, but it's in progress and things are moving. So that's great. Thank you. Um, so that we usually, um, you know, aren't meetings as frequently, and you know, we only met two months ago, uh, so there's usually more more time for new advisories and developments with TMDLs. But um, Susan, is there anything you uh, can report on advisories from the last two months? Yes, we issued an update to um, the advisory that had been in place since I think 1987 for a number of water bodies in the Guadalupe River watershed. And we were able to add advice for another a lake, Almaden Lake and Calero Creek uh, into that. We put it all into one advisory. And then uh, we're presently um, updating Lake Silverwood, which is in review, and uh, Lake Hensley in Region 5, which is also in review. So those are on our plate at the moment. Great. Thank you. Um, TMDLs. Um, we are going to this uh, the 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 Central Valley Rivers TMDL that uh, Lauren talked about last time has a major bearing on our discussion and plans for 22. Um, maybe give a quick update on that here, Lauren. Yeah, I, you know we haven't really um, put a lot of staff time right now towards the development of that TMDL. Right now we're working on the Delta Methylmercury TMDL review, but a lot of the work that is to be done on the Rivers TMDL uh, that, that is in our work plan um, will use the data uh, that will hopefully be collected by BOG. Uh, there's not any other uh, long-term or any really other monitoring program established uh, to to understand the concentration of mercury and, and fish in the in river segments. So we're hoping to utilize BOG to inform that TMDL. Great, thank you. Um, Carrie, probably no news on the on the mer statewide mercury TMDL. Correct. No news. Okay. Um, the BOG is a, a work group of the the Water Quality Monitoring Council as well. And um, Nick, if you have anything that, that you think we should, that Bog should hear about, you can mention that. I want to uh, uh, do one, uh, one thing that uh, I want to mention is that the, the Monitoring Council has formed a Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion subcommittee, the JEDI Council. They couldn't resist calling it that. Um, and I couldn't resist being part of it when, with a name like that. but. Um, that that group has met and they're working on a um, recruitment message to try to to um, get um, community representatives involved in the council uh, council activities. So um, I think this is the 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 bog work with the realignment in our community engagement is going to be um, I think one of the main things that 
is done under the umbrella of the council. So um, if anybody um, wants more information on that or wants to be uh, involved in the recruitment process, um, let let Nick know. Um, I'd, I'd be interested in hearing, you know, being in the loop on that as well. Um, so that's one thing I wanted to make sure to mention. Nick, any other highlights that should be mentioned? Uh, sure. Yeah, thanks, Jay. Um, a new uh, council MOU was signed by Secretary Blumenfeld and Crowfoot at the end of December. So that's up and posted. Um, the real main change there is that um, just re-establish the partnership between the two agencies, um, being Cal EPA and uh, Natural Resources Agency, um, committed to be more of a more 50-50 partnership over the last couple of years. The uh, CNRA had pulled out right before uh, Secretary Kofoot took uh, his seat as secretary and um, he has since wanted to re-engage uh, as an active partner. And uh, in doing so, he uh, appointed Mark Gold as the council co-chair representing uh, the resources agency. So that's uh, exciting news for the council. And um, there is a council meeting coming up on February 11th from 10 to 4, uh, where there'll be a report out on uh, the the subcommittee that Jay just mentioned, as well as a couple of others that were created, and that will be um, Mark's first meeting uh, as well. And there will um, be some interesting topics to discuss uh, related to Jedi issues, including a presentation from Greg, um, uh, or more of a class uh, or session to that should be more accurate, and um, some interesting stuff about safe to drink and other subcommittee and work being done by the council. So I encourage anyone um, interested to reach out to me if they don't already have the information on that meeting and um, other than that uh, it'll be on february 11th from 10 to 4. thanks jay great thanks nick okay and then the last couple of things are from you anna right yeah so thanks jay so um uh, there are some links in the agenda to the updated California fish consumption uh, study inventory that you all have been helping us um, compile. So just a list of consumption survey studies that have been completed and are publicly available. Um, I've also actually added them to a new literature, a relevant uh, literature page on the BOG website, which I'll talk about later. So those are also available there. And then there's also a link to the save the date for the California Water Data Science Symposium that'll be on June 29th and 30th. Um, it'll be virtual again this year due to safety and, and planning limitations and things like that um, for COVID. And then um, if, you're, if you're doing great work related to water data science, <laughs> which I know a lot of you are um, and would like to tell us about it. We'd love to get your abstract um, and potentially get you on the agenda. And those abstracts are due on March 15th. Um, and there's links to that registration. Um, if you're a water board person, there's also an opportunity to be a mentor to emerging um, freshwater scientists. We're partnering with CalSFS to, to help with that this year as well. Um, so, if you are a water board person, I'll talk a little bit in more detail about that mentorship opportunity at the Swamp Roundtable in, in February, um, or you can reach out to me directly um, and I can give you more information. But um, please uh, send us your abstracts because we'd love to hear about the great work that you're doing. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Anna. So are there any other uh, notable um, events from, from the group that we haven't covered yet? or questions. All right. Well, we're uh, doing pretty well with our timing so far. So we'll move on to the next item. So this is the, um, the taking the last steps on the sampling plan for this year. Um, so the, the outcome we're looking for is just to keep you informed, obtain any further input, although at this point, it uh, should be just dotting the I's and crossing the T's, but I want to let you know uh, what happens next. 
Um, so as a refresher of your memories, we discussed this at the last meeting, um, November, and uh, the notes the notes are posted as indicated here. Um, after the meeting, I sent out the the, the lake list uh, to the group. Uh, you know, um, draft final on December tenth, and then I did get some confirmations and a, a little bit additional input from from several of the regions, and uh, have you know now updated an updated version of that big table that has all of the information in it. Um, so so what happens next? Um, we need to document this, and um, in the in, for this for this uh, bat long term bass monitoring for the last couple of rounds. The well, last round, um, I documented things, but we never sort of formally um, captured it in a swamp document. This time, um, we want to do a better job on that. Um, so we want to. We want to provide a document that provides a clear record, and, and Autumn needs a document that she can cite in the QAPP, um, which is also she's working on, um, and needs to get that together before the sampling starts this spring. Um, so the approach that uh, I'm proposing is to prepare a sampling plan update document. The 2015 document, which is shown here, is still you know, overall, it hasn't changed um, a lot, but some of the details of the sampling have changed. And then we, you know, we have added um, you know, some lakes to the to the list for this year um, with the regional regional board input. Um, so what I'm what I'm uh, envisioning is um, writing a a preface uh, to explain what I've just been describing, and then compiling the figures and tables that have changed to indicate uh, the current the current design and the current list of lakes that we're going to sample. Um, and so I have a section that's got those elements. And then um, after that, append the original plan um, and then and put a cover on it so that uh, it's got a document number and it's something that we can put on the website and people can find. So um, anybody who's interested in the plan for this year can find this document, which would have all the information that uh, describes what we're doing this year in one place. Um, so I'll come back to this to make sure uh, the group likes that idea, but just to show some of the content that would be included. So. Um, here's a list of the, the lakes that uh, were requested by the regions and that we're going to try to include. Um, there were several lakes on the original panel list that were sampled uh, recently and didn't need to be sampled again. They were sampled in 2019, um, several lakes from Region 4. Um, so there was some room in the budget and in Autumn's um, usually able to uh, work in a few extra lakes, you know. Anyway, so so these are the target lakes that we want to um, add to the list, um, and then so there's um, seven that uh, are on the in the include category, and then a couple that, if budget allows, we will will include um, based on a request from Region Three, um, but they're scheduled for panel five anyway. So um, if we don't have enough budget, then you know they, they will be sampled in, in two years when we do panel five anyway. So this is something that we want to capture in the sampling plan document. Um, there have also been some refinements of the uh, the target. Jen, this is, yes. This is Can I just chime in about that last slide? Yes. Um, we're not going to be able to fit in all of those under the include category. Okay. So um, it would be really nice to have a hierarchy of which you want. Does that, does that make sense? 
yeah, a prioritized list. Okay. And also, some of these we did do in 2019. I know Diamond Valley was 2019. I think Scott's Flat was as well. So just keep that in mind as well. Thanks. Okay. Uh, we'll come back to that as well. Um, so, so as I was saying, one of the things that has been tweaked over the past couple rounds of sampling are some of the size ranges. A um, couple species, uh, well, striped bass wasn't in here, so I added some size limit, size specifications for striped bass. Um, for green sunfish, the original plan didn't have the size range filled in, so we've gradually added some information here. And then um, those of you who have, you know, been with the bog a few years will hopefully um, rec recognize this figure that summarizes the design. Um, I did update these figures two years ago. Um, but um, only only Moss Landing and me have you know have that information handy. Um, so uh, this this inf th 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 these graphics will be included in this document so that everybody can access them. But this is a, a visual summary of of what what we're doing um, and the design. You know this shows the small lake design for the sport fish, the bottom feeders and the predators, and then also for prey fish. And then the design is a little different for medium sized lakes and larger lakes, but I'm not, I don't, didn't, that'll be in the document, but I'm not showing that in the slides here. Okay, so that's what I'm proposing to put in this document. So first let's uh, just, I wanna sort of get a stamp of approval uh, on my proposed approach for this document. Um, does anybody uh, have different ideas or um, are we okay with this this proposal? Anybody not okay with it? In the chat um, a couple minutes ago, Carrie said it was a good approach and there isn't, there haven't been any other uh, negative reactions to the approach in the chat. Okay, yeah, um, I take that negative approach because it's the fastest way to sort of see if there's any, you know, to move the discussion along. So, um, so sounds good. Um, so, I will be getting this together. Um, I'm hoping for next week. Uh, I did I did a fair amount of the updating um, yesterday, so uh, should be pretty straightforward to do. And then Autumn will have what she needs. Um, I'll share it with the group, and Autumn will have what she needs for the crap. And you can always, if you notice anything that's, um, you know, any errata, uh, we can still fix things. Um, so just let me know. Okay, so now to the issue Autumn raised about not the budget not being able to cover all of these lakes. Um, I think the First thing I'll ask is, are there, uh, from the regions that are represented here, are, are any of these, uh, would you be willing to put them in a lower priority? This is Lauren Smitherman from Region 5. Um, if Autumn said that Scott's flat was sampled in 2019, then that may not be as much of a priority. I believe Scott's Flat and Clementine were uh, two lakes that uh, the Sierra Fund had recommended uh, be sampled. So I was kind of passing th those recommendations along, but if they have been sampled recently, then we can put them on a lower priority. Autumn, I'm not, I don't wanna juggle through my files uh, since I'm showing the slides. Do, can you confirm that? Uh, Scott's flat was sampled in 19? Uh, yeah, I was just going to go check that, but give me a couple minutes. Okay. Hey, Autumn, I think it was, this is Billy, I think it was in 2016. Hmm. Okay, well, that's a different story then. <laughs> yeah, and it was, and it was, 
sampled by BMP. I don't know who that is. But that was one of the, the lakes in the in that 2016 study, Billy? Yes. Hi, Billy. This is Scott Lucas. Okay. Um, I, I recall doing that in 2019. I'm 95% sure. I think I did that with April. Do you recall that, April? I don't. Sorry. Okay, I'll look and see if I have it handy. I take notes on all these sites, so I'll chime in if I can confirm that. Great. So that's one candidate to potentially demote. Um, any others? Uh, Autumn, how many do we need to drop? Or, you know, sometimes, you know, we, uh, it depends on how things play out. We're able to go further down the list if some lakes aren't sampleable. Okay, I double checked and Scott's flat was definitely sampled in 2019. Okay. Um, and then as for how many that we can sample, um, I th that's gonna take some working. <laughs> so I realized I had some mistakes in my budget this morning, so I'm going through and fixing them and then needing to add all this stuff in. Um, yeah, but so so I don't I can't really answer that. And then, of course, like you said, it also depends on what our catch is. You know, if we're not getting everything that we set out to, then we have cost savings in the analysis side. All right. So maybe I think we should handle this offline where, you know, you kind of update your budget and, you know, get a clear idea of that. And then we can work with these regions to prioritize the list. Sounds good. Okay, so that's pretty much it for item three. Any other comments or questions on it? All right. Okay, on to item four. Um, so this is uh, um, one of the, the meteor items on the agenda. Um, we need to... Uh, have some discussion about the plan for 2022. There's a lot of things that we that we want to do, and uh, the budget um, there is going to be limited. And also, the uh, capacity of Moss Landing is a major consideration here. So, um, hey, Jay, yes, about the about our capacity. So, so since our discussion last time, we went through and, and looked at the work figured out what equipment we have and everything. And really, um, as far as equipment goes, we're, we can cover everything. So then it's just a matter of hiring on new team members, which is an easy thing to do in non-COVID years. Um, <laughs> so uh, I don't think that's gonna be an issue. All right, well, maybe this item won't be, be so challenging, <laughs> but uh, it's still good to, to I think, just kind of lay out the plan and, and uh, get everybody on board and, and move, move things along. Um, so there is a lot um, on the you know, potential books for 2022. Um, we need to complete the current coast survey and there are um, a fairly uh, large number of zones that we still need to sample in the North Coast. Um, by next year, uh, the realignment process, um, if everything goes according to plan, we will have identified some water bodies in Region 9 that we want to monitor as part of uh, um, our work with the um, tribal groups and other groups with um, high consumption rates. Um, so that's another important piece that we want to fit in. Um, as Lauren talked about earlier, um, they're really looking for some uh, for for bog swamp to generate some data to support the Central Valley Rivers TMDL, um, and uh, that's the kind of kind of thing that uh, we like to do to you know support uh, support management policies. Um, 
can make make sure that we're uh, that the bog data are, are, are um, having impact and are used for management. Um, so we, yeah, so we we had in our long term plan we had we were planning to do rivers and streams, and then there's that specific uh, aspect of rivers and streams with the TMDL. And then, in addition, for Moss Landing, another consideration is that uh, the, the EPA's National Lakes Assessment is considering adding fish. Um, um, Terry, do you have an update on that? Is that is that a fish is added? It is added. Fish and habs have been added. Yep. Okay. Okay. So um, Moss Landing needs to fit that, and it doesn't affect our bog budget, but just a, it's a Moss Landing capacity issue. Uh, Jay, this is Gary. Yeah. We also need to get that list of um, lakes ASAP because that'll have to get into our permits. Yeah, good, good point. So that EPA lake list? No, we're keeping it to ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Terry. Yeah. And we'd also need a list of rivers and streams. Um, is it the same as it was in round one or different? Okay, well, we will talk. That'll be one of the things we talk about. Because uh, I did get some input from Lauren on that, and um, I'll set I'll set that up. So we'll get there in a few minutes. Okay, so um, uh, again, longer term bog members. Uh, we'll remember this table that shows our long-term plan. It's a little busy, but it summarizes long-term monitoring throughout the state for the major uh, water body categories and shows the swamp monitoring in the context with other other programs. Um, so I'm going to, and especially since we um, you know, may have a little little extra time, just go through this a little bit. For, for newer folks. Um, so first for lakes, um, the main thing that uh, SWAMP is doing is this long-term bass lake monitoring, which we started in 2015. So the, the symbols here, the X's indicate things that are covered by SWAMP and the O's are things that are covered by other programs. And, and it, uh, it's probably still a little, I did update this a little bit, but it probably still needs a little updating. But the bold items are things that where we've got firm plans, and then the the non bold are things that are more tentative. Um, so we have firm plans on the Bass Lake monitoring, which we do in odd years. We're about to do the fourth round, panel four. Then we'll hit panel five, and then we'll start uh, start cycling through again. Um, that's you know, long long term uh, effort that we've laid out. Um, we we in twenty before twenty fifteen and up until twenty sixteen, we we did sampling of new lakes. Uh, we did a little, so we did a little bit more of that in twenty sixteen. That's shown here. Um, this row is um, kind of anticipating the TMDL um, moving forward and leading to targeted monitoring of lakes with management actions. Um, so this used to have a couple circles uh, in earlier years, but I pushed this out a bit. Um, it's tentative, but uh, could add um, to the statewide monitoring. And then trout lakes, um, we sampled in the initial survey in, 20, in 2007 and 8, um, across the state, we did a lot of trout lakes, but we didn't. Uh, we haven't done anything on them since. So this has us um, revisiting trout lakes on a 20-year cycle since uh, they were generally the level of concern was lower for trout lakes. There were, a, you know, a small number of lakes that had mercury above 0.2, um, and uh, Initially, I had this had the the idea of visiting revisiting those on a ten year cycle. Um, we didn't do that, um, so so it's more of a twenty year cycle that's laid out for these trout lakes. Um, so that's the overall plan for lakes. 
Um, for rivers and streams, um, one of the main areas of concern, if not the area of concern, is Delta. And the Delta RMP um, is doing some uh, really robust annual monitoring of, of um, bass in the Delta. And that's been going since 2016. Uh, it is expected to continue for the next few years. So this is another, in the statewide scheme of things, this is an important piece. Um, and then in the, we did uh, an initial river survey in 2011. And uh, our, our long-term plan, you know, uh, there, there were sites that were identified with some issues. Um, in addition to the Delta sites. And so we we had the idea of um, sampling those on a 10 year cycle. Um, and so basically having uh, a river focus again in 2022 fits into the longer term plan. And then also with the that rivers TMDL, um, there's you know even more added uh, um, rationale for doing this work doing having a focus on rivers in 2022 so both do the long sort of 10-year cycle and the tmdl there's a good reason to focus on rivers in 2022 um, and then uh, for the coast we're coordinating with the san francisco bay regional monitoring program which samples on a five-year cycle um, and then the bite program which we partner with in samples fish on a 10-year cycle and we're just wrapping up the reporting on that um, and then we've got the other coast zones so um, we did a little bit of the you know a few zones outside of the bite in 2018 we did a few more in 2019 um, then we had a big effort last year but we still have a um, a large chunk of the coast is to finish in 2022. Um, um, so, uh, so that's another one of the key pieces for 22 in the in the longer term plan. So that's basically our long term plan. Um, uh, Anna, did you add the brackets? Yeah, I was. Getting people to focus on 2022 and beyond. Okay. That's it. That's all that means. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I like it. Um, okay. And then um, for more background, uh, I wanted wanted to show what we did for the rivers um, survey in 2011, and uh, Lauren can say more about this, but she she. Um, email me saying that she thought this was a good basic uh, template for um, you know another round of river sampling um, so this this uh, you know if we do need to prioritize things I think one of the questions is so Lauren's got a particular interest in the valley um, we did sample a lot of um, rivers and streams at higher elevations um, so if we do need to uh, limit the scope of what we do, then you know it, maybe we could make the rivers a two-step process if if there's a need for that. Um, Laura, is there um, any you know would you want to add, or elaborate on that? Yeah, you know, and I think it kind of all comes down to budget of what we do have to work with, um, as you. Stated the RMP, the Delta RMP um, is sampling Delta sites. Um, I know that over the next few years, that sampling strategy is changing. Uh, you know, 2016 to 2019, they really did an intensive survey, or you did an intensive survey um, of the Delta um, of of fish to inform the Delta Mercury TMDL, and so we we use that data and. Um, so potentially some of those Delta sites that um, are currently being monitored could be moved a little more upstream in those tributaries. But if we were dealing with the same kind of budget 
you know, I, I would want to at least continue these sites that were sampled in 2011 for that long-term trend analysis that would benefit the BOGS uh, initiatives or objectives and also the regional board's objectives. Um, the other thing uh, that I'm considering with where we sample is uh, to prioritize OEHA's objectives as well for um, for the advisories for rivers and streams. So I haven't spoken with OEHA about that, but uh, just like they provided for the reservoirs, you know, maybe we could get together and look at what are their data needs for the rivers and streams for advisories as well. So you know, I want I want this um, this campaign to to be. Uh, a benefit to multiple parties, but if we're looking at just directly the Rivers TMDL, we could supplement a little more um, in the valley. Mm -hmm. So for the Rivers TMDL, the focus is on the sort of lower elevation valley stations, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so just so for the, you know, so the to inform the group discussion, so there are, there are kind of two subsets here: the valley floor um, stations, and then the upper elevation stations, which were pretty numerous. Um, so, Autumn, this you know, for a first cut, um, this is the station list for the rivers, uh, and you know, subject to discussion. This is our starting point. Okay, great. Thank you. So going back to uh, the, you know, the, the list, the overall list of things and your comment about capacity. Um, so that you're logistically, you can handle doing uh, coast and fresh water. Uh, so it becomes more a matter of how far the budget can go yeah yeah it does so we still have if i remember correctly we still have about 12 or 13 zones left for the coast um and then you know we can make the rest of that stretch as far as we can with rivers and streams and um and realignment um yeah I'm not tracking the realignment budget, though, or I haven't been. Right. I can. <laughs> Two comments. One, yeah. I sent you the National Lakes Assessment uh, sample sites, um, and uh, that sampling will be done in 2022. And then the second thing, if you go back to the slide before with the uh, rivers and streams, you know, a lot of those streams are basically, you know, the, that one, yeah. I mean, a lot of them are basically green up in the high elevation, and it makes me wonder whether or not we spent, want to spend a whole lot of time up in the high elevation where it's pretty much green. Right. So just a comment or thought. Mm -hmm. A thought more than a comment. And then another uh, variable with the budget is uh, maybe, hopefully, Anna, you can say a little, at least a little bit about it, that you know, we're hoping for, for more funds to kick in to support that work? For, sorry, I was taking notes for the realignment. Yeah. Do, yeah. Do we know so, when, when that might happen? So I have a meeting next week with um, folks to talk about all of that. And so I can circle back with um, UJ and Autumn about like the realignment budget and those sorts of plans. Um, but that, would be separate funding, um, sort of, it was ours originally, it was used for something else, now we're getting it back. Um, but that would be separate funding for the realignment specifically, so we wouldn't be pulling out of the base budget um, for those efforts. But I can circle back with more useful <laughs> information, um, hopefully early next week. Okay. Well, that would, you know, that would be great, obviously, and if, you know, those funds could cover this, the monitoring that we do to support the realignment, and then um, it would be a matter of doing the coast and then seeing how far the 
the the normal budget goes uh, in the rivers and streams and so possibly you know the top priority would be the valley floor stations and then um, there might be a couple tiers of stations up in the high elevation where the where the green ones are lower priority Does that sound right to people? That sounds good to me, Jay. Any other thoughts on this? Um, so it, um, it's great to great to get the news from Autumn that um, that the the equipment and uh, staffing aren't as big of an issue as we thought they were a couple of weeks ago. All right. Um, well, I think we're we're done with this item. So Anna's going to look into the budget, the realignment budget. Um, Terry already did his action item, and then Autumn's going to figure out how far the budget can go. Uh, and uh, either at the next meeting or earlier, if necessary, we'll report back and take things the next step. All right, I think we'll move on. Um, uh, uh, so is Greg on the line? Greg who? Yes, I'm here. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Excellent. All right, you're up, Greg. Greg Gearhart from the State Water Board. Uh, hi, this will be brief. Um, I'm just working and enjoying the conversation in the background, but um, I wanted to provide a bit of a heads up for some process that's coming that I, I, I think is a real great opportunity to integrate into the existing process of the BOG. So you're probably all familiar with the, the statute was passed. Um, if not, here's the statute. It's essentially, uh, it's a final sort of piece in a system that had been working for years to try to communicate the, the data that's coming out of the BOG as well as some other um, information, but essentially risk communication was breaking down at the very end of the process um, uh, because there was no real mandate to make sure the county health officers or the county environmental health departments were doing the final step of put, posting the notices at the places where people were most likely to see them or fish or whatever. So fixing that step required a couple of years of, of work um, and the fix is, is actually, those of you who follow this stuff, um, is not unlike the unfunded mandate issues that came up with uh, beach water quality monitoring. So when the state puts a mandate on a local government, um, there is a need to provide some sort of funding. Otherwise, it, it could be considered an unfunded mandate and, and turned out to either be inactive or hurt the state later. So with that in mind, what this statute really, all it does is it... Um, it provides a resource for the local um, jurisdictions to do the posting um, and request reimbursement for that. Um, along the way though, there was a real opportunity, obviously for us to establish some expectations for what posting was supposed it is meant to do and how we would uh, sort of consider the reimbursement per our guidelines on, on what the grants would be um, considered successful. So in other words, we could put performance-based criteria in there so that we have some mechanism to ensure that what is being done is actually helpful. Um, all of this was meant to sort of be uh, a slow play out over the next couple of years um, with the idea that maybe we could work with the BOG and some of the other stakeholders to build those criteria in the system. Um, and then we learned in the last couple of weeks that this um, funding mechanism has to be encumbered this year. And so there's a, there's a current rush to sort of build the grant making process and the grant uh, making process is uh, currently I think intended to go to a center uh, a central organization the CCDEH the departments of environmental health um, uh, group that Justin Milan I forget the, the exact name of that group but basically they were part of the um, sponsors of the bill and they were also uh, wrangling a lot of the different county health officers. So the idea now is to provide sort of a central group
grant making process to them, a block grant that they would be able to distribute to local health agencies. I did clarify, we had a question that um, came up in our process of whether this um, whole system of resource reimbursement was available to tribes. At this point, it doesn't look like it is, which is a huge problem in my opinion. But um, so right now, this, this would be for local um, health departments and counties in California. Um, we don't, we're not going to have time to integrate criteria this round, but what we hope to do is to build in some sort of placeholder that allows us to update maybe annually when we sort of redo the block grant um, uh, agreement that we would be able to update that criteria and provide some more meaningful stuff down the road. So it still goes back to that original vision that we have some time, but I did want to give you guys that early heads up uh, because I think in the next years, uh, going forward, we would like to sort of integrate this process to be a, a bit of a feedback loop. This is a real opportunity for us to, I think, uh, as the sort of science arm leading some of the study design for the collection of the data to really be um, involved with the final step of that sort of feedback loop to make sure that we are doing our best to communicate the risk to the people that are at most um, risk. So that's my brief item um, and I'm available to take some questions. Anna, are you seeing any hands up or any questions in the chat? Or even enthusiastic support feedback would be welcome. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything in the chat. And um, for those of you who attended the last meeting, my assumption is complete silence means enthusiastic support. <laughs> so um, I think everyone's super pumped. <laughs> great job. Great job. Love it. Thanks. Yeah, no, it's it's exciting. So we'll be in the we'll be in the communication loop. I think um, we do have some draft placeholder ideas that I think we're working with the council, the Water Quality Monitoring Council, Nick, and others um, within the council are helping sort of build a system. But what I'd rather do than sort of arrive at a perfect set of criteria now is to build some sort of process that allows us to sort of adapt and learn as we go. Because as we have learned, this is never you know like. I'll just throw out um, one of the things that we heard. The counties want to have some sort of threshold limit for where they would have to post. And one of the ideas was um, any fishing spot with a parking spot for enough parking for 20 vehicles or more. So any of these small spots where people actually fish would not sort of be meet that threshold. And the, the reason they want that is some sort of certainty for how much posting they have to do. They want to be able to you know plan their their budgets and time appropriately. So these are controversial decisions that are going to end up being made that may or may not actually succeed in improving the risk communication. So I think it's a real opportunity for us to, to learn and to grow together with the counties. Thanks for your time. Yeah, I, I think it is a great uh, piece to, to uh, add to uh, you know, places where the BOG can, can have some input and to like you know, bring, bring the data, sort of complete, complete the, the loop on generating the data and then uh, helping to make sure it gets communicated to the to the groups that need it um, so it um, sounds like something that we should um, include as a standing item on our agendas just to get updates and hear the latest and then at some point we'll uh, the, this group will be able to have some input yeah that's that's great I, th I think that answers the one question I see from Melissa too is that would be the mechanism to keep in touch and to make sure that we're coordinating well. Um, so I'm happy to do that and I, I can be here myself or I can delegate as we get more involved with our staff. Happy to do that. We also, I should mention, we also recognize the need for community input on this and we have some new options for providing um, reimbursement for community advisors on some of our efforts. So that's another sort of interesting thing to think about down the road is how would we set that up to make sure that what we're doing is also being informed by people in the actual communities. Yeah, and we'll, uh, you know, we're we're planning a focused effort in Region Nine to start this realignment work. Um, so we'll, you know, I think we'll I anticipate getting a good group of community representatives, um, and so that could be another thing that we have. We get, you know. We, it, uh, another form of input that we get from those folks if, if we get involved that way. Cool. All right. Thanks, everyone. Hey, Greg, this is Chad. I had a quick question for you. Yeah. 
Um, I was just curious if you've gotten blanket funding requests from all the counties um, or are there counties that have actually um, volunteered to move ahead with with posting without requesting funding? Well, um, the the funding part is being handled by DFA. They're actually running a process right now to take a, some resolution to the board to allow them to enter into the agreement with CCDEH. So I don't think we even know which counties are considering getting funding and those that aren't, other than we did have a meeting a year or so ago that seemed like there were more proactive counties on the phone call and less proactive ones that maybe weren't on the call or were quiet on the call. Um, but I can't, I, it strikes me that maybe Alameda was kind of proactive, but anyway, I don't, I would have to be guessing and we don't really see that point of uh, transaction at this point because DFA is gonna run that down the road and it's gonna be run through this um, third party group but I think it's a really good um, question. And maybe what we can do is make sure that we have a process by which we attend those meetings with the local health agencies as they sort of talk about this. Thanks. All right, any other comments or questions? Thanks a lot, Greg. Thanks, going back to lurk mode. We're enthusiastically excited about this. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Um, so, Anna, do you want me to do the slides? Uh, yeah, the this this slide is just this one. It'll be super right. quick. Right. Right. Um, so the update is the realignment is happening. We're working on it um, with Region Nine, potentially the Central Coast, um, to be determined on that one, but. We're establishing the pilot structure right now with the core folks that are going to do the majority of the heavy lifting in terms of engaging with the public um, and getting all the information and things like that. So we're just kind of finding the ducks and getting them in a row. Um, and hopefully the plan will be to really start the active engagement process in quarter two. Um, but and then this is kind of a, a timeline that shows you know, the, the next couple years of what the general plan will be. Of course, as you all know, as soon as you make a timeline, it'll need to be adjusted. So this is tentative and flexible as we learn new things and hit speed bumps as we inevitably will. Um, these slides will be posted um, after the meeting. So anything that's like underlined with that kind of teal text is actually a link. Um, and so there are links here to a new program realignment page. Um, I'm kind of dealing with the spoiler for um, the web updates later, but there's the program realignment page, a link to the final plan, which is on that page. And then also we received some great feedback um, by folks from Squirp, I think, that looked at the realignment plan and went, you know, it'd be really nice if you could just get to the gist. What's What's the deal with this? An executive summary would be great. So we developed an executive summary, um, hopefully got to the gist in three pages. And so that's also provided um, for people to, to check out. Um, and then as we've kind of been discussing, I'll continue to keep the bog updated on where we're at with the realignment um, over the next couple of years. And I think that's it, unless someone else has questions. Um, Jay, Chad, if you want to jump in, feel free to do so. I love to hear that excitement from you guys. It's so great. <laughs> Just, it warms my heart. <laughs> Sounds amazing. <laughs> Very exciting stuff. <clears throat> I'm looking forward to, to getting to getting going on it. It'll be more exciting. We'll have a more exciting update at the next meeting. Yeah, I hope that that you know once we start actually engaging with the the other agencies and community groups and tribes, that's when you know things are really going to get um, challenging and fun and when you know, innovation happens. So um, yeah. that'll be great. All right. So it sounds like we're on to the next item. 
And this is an item from Jennifer Salisbury, longtime BOG member. Hi, folks. When are we going to squeeze in our coffee break this morning? Uh, that's a good question. I could wait. <laughs> Should we do it? I think we are ahead of schedule, even though I can't see my agenda. But we're, we're, oh, we're totally out of schedule. I had to make sure that my husband stopped doing construction because I'm like, it's earlier. <laughs> So should we do a five minute break? Yeah, it sounds great. I can hold off. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Well, let's Thank uh you. so so ten forty five we'll start up again. Okay. Okay. Good suggestion. Thanks.
Anna, are you back? I never left. <laughs> I'm working on the notes. All right, great. Um, Hi, Jay. Yes. So Jennifer, let's do it. Long time no here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. We'll give people one one extra minute. And then uh, I can just keep doing the slides if you like. Yeah, it's fine. Well, I don't know if you're talking to me or Anna. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, uh, you, and but Anna as well. All right. Um, well, I hope everybody's back from the short break and we're ready to hear from Jennifer about tissue data prioritization. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jennifer okay. Salisbury. Are you ready? Forward. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so um, I'm in the process of uh, loading in all of uh, the organics, the mercury, the age, all of the different types of, of tissue. Um, related files. And so um, I, right now my main focus is trying to get the oldest or actually all the Delta files in, which are the organics. Um, those particular ones are um, super challenging to say the least to get in just because of whenever you have um, organics, unlike mercury, mercury is one compound. So you're only looking at one compound, but when you have like multiples, it just takes a much longer time to get through the data. And so um, I just wanted to talk to the group and, um, and talk about kind of the prioritization um, of the, of the tissue pushes into the database. Um, like many other people, I have multiple hats. Um, so what's happening is that I do chemistry data for the tissue um, Tuesday through Thursday. And then on Monday and Friday, I typically have to work on another job that I have. So uh, what this, um, PowerPoint presentation shows you is um, the things for 2019 um, that are still kind of in my queue uh, where it comes to the chemistry files and the chemistry files are not including uh, the mercury files, I believe. I don't, I don't, I don't believe they, that they, these are just the, um, the Delta chemistry files. Yeah, there's a so. second slide after this one as well to show the rest of the files. Okay, Jennifer. okay. I wasn't sure. <laughs> Quick. Oh, there they are. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah. So I do have some age tissue files from 2019. I also have um, these are the, it is a, it is a, an always a constantly moving list. Um, but uh, as of probably about two weeks ago, this was the number that I had. So just to make sure everybody's clear on what that is. So that, that's the, the bass scale reading age data. Is that yes. right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, and just kind of jumping to the cutting to the chase. That's I don't use that, you know, in my usual write ups. I use the length. Um, mm -hmm. so, so I think that's a lower priority. I mean, we want to get it eventually, but I don't need it to write the data report. Got it. Okay, 
Um, Anna, can you um, also show him the the next slide? Jay's got the slide Sorry. power. There you okay. go. Okay. Yep. Um, so the tissue composite, in order for me to load anything, the reason why those are 2020 is that that is like the first piece that I add to the database. Uh, those files, thank you, Autumn, are relatively easy to push through, and there's only two of them. And typically, the amount of composite files that I have kind of in the queue usually remains pretty low because of the fact that I need those files first in order for me to add any other of the data. So the other thing that I wanted um, you to look at is the metals. The metals, they are um, also relatively easy to push through the database because they only have one, they're just, they're easy. They don't have a lot going on. And then Auden's been doing um, the metal files for so long that they typically are like just, they're like butter. <laughs> they just go in. So, um, so, and as you can see, you know, with the Fish Lake is probably the biggest amount of files that I have for the mercury files. And that's the one that's at the bottom, the 27, the 2019 Fish Lake. So maybe I'll start, start things off by uh, saying, you know, saying what uh, my priority is in terms of getting the, keeping the recording moving. Um, and then mm -hmm. other, others can, you know, chime in if they've got urgent okay. things. Um, but for, for me, the, the next thing I want to do is that 2019 data report. Okay. So the, 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 the uh, SWB Fish Lake 2019 is uh, one that I need. For the metals that include that, that includes the ones that are the um region four also do you clump those two together um it's a third file it's a third name on uh, on the yeah. metals i i don't you i don't include those in the uh in these data okay. reports okay and then and then you know others can others can add to what i say or modify what I'm saying, but I'm just putting out my straw man. And then the other one I, I would want to see is the SWB Fish Lake 2019 for the organics. Okay. And then that would- Would you want me, would you because, want, well- just, yeah. And just because I need those to do the data report. Okay. That I talked about wanting to do by third or fourth quarter this year. Um, now, if any other regions have more urgent, you know, needs, then, um, you know, that's not a problem, you know, but, you know, now's the time to let Jennifer know. Okay. Is the region for Fish Lake, will they be writing their own report or is that data going to be included in your report? Yeah, I don't. I don't routinely include those in uh, in the Bass Lake mm -hmm. monitoring reports. Okay. And then in the chat, um, Melissa Doherty just was checking with Jennifer that the Region Board 3 2020 Delta files are on your radar. And just um, to preface that, Melissa, again, the, these files specifically are a couple weeks old. So if that file came in a day after I made the list, then it, it's probably on Jennifer's radar, but I'll let Jen respond. Yeah, um, the, the all, all of the chemistry is my number one, um, my number one priority. Um, I need to get through all of those chemistry files. The ones that are on the screen right now? There may be some additional, but yeah. if they, I think she, uh, Melissa's right, is that there is, hold on for a second, I'm gonna look at chemistry. This is out of my Yeah, there was, there was an additional, there was additional file that showed up for January 13th. 
in January 13th. So, and it would have been the Region 3 Special Study Bog. Yeah, Jennifer, I just, I know that we've talked about this a little bit, so that's not a complete file. And so just wanted you to know that Delta should be delivering a second set of files for that special study. So when Delta sends us partial reports, those partial reports can actually be pushed into the database because the additional file would be a separate lab batch. Yeah, I think it's because they were using a subcontractor for the files that they've submitted, so they haven't submitted the files yeah. based on the chemistry they ran in-house. So I just, yeah, I just want to make sure. I know it's coming in two sets, but it's the same data set, so. Just yeah, checking. the any additional files that came come in from Delta, I, I need to address. So does anybody else um, have urgency about their data sets and want Jennifer to get to them? Hey Jay, this is Chad again. Yeah. Uh, I don't have any urgency, but I would suggest maybe reaching out to the integrated report units um, to see when their next uh, anticipated uh, data cutoff is. Cause I know the, the cutoff for the next cycle, which is uh, two, four and eight has passed. And so that would be that would mean the next data pool would be for regions one, six, and seven. So they they may have some anticipated deadlines. So if you want to get that data in before, you know, it might be a priority for those regions. I don't know. And Chad, just to piggyback on that, I think that's a good comment, kind of overall to the group for considering some of these different study designs for when the regions are going to be on cycle. So I know that I've talked to Jay offline a little bit about some of those additional water bodies that we had requested for region three, and those would specifically be useful for our next listing cycle. So maybe as a group, we can consider integrated report cycles and how those align with the, the various studies for the BOG. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, Jennifer and Anna, is that something that you guys could follow up on? It looks like Tessa sent a message in the in the um, in the uh, chat that says the next data poll um, is not um, is not for another two years. So we're we're good on that. Um, but mm -hmm. I, yeah, I can help uh, facilitate the coordination between general integrated report needs and and our needs. I can work on that. Great. So does anyone else have anything? So what I'm what I'm kind of finishing is the first thing that I need to do is I need to deal with the remaining Delta files that I have in my queue, which is the organic chemistry file. And then once that's done, then I will move to, um, I will move to the, um, the um, fish, the SWB Fish Lake 2019 mercury files. I'll push those um, pretty quickly. Sounds good. And definitely before the third and fourth quarter. <laughs> well, my timeline is dependent on yours. So, uh, yeah. I, okay. um, if you start feeling like it's not happening fast enough, like I said, it's like I could do those relatively quickly. I know that that's 27 files is a lot of files, but um, I can usually, with the mercury files, I can usually push about four of them a day. If I don't have any issues, the organics one file will take me one to two weeks because they're so big. Mm -hmm. Then in in the past, we've gotten uh, you know strong encouragement from the water board to get things and and you know bog members to get things on the portal uh, mm -hmm. in a timely manner. So I think that's probably a, a more important driver than the you know the data report and that 
Um, you know, we put the data into CNN and uh, you know, make it available before. So Jay, yeah, I can actually speak. Yeah, I can speak to that though, because the thing is, is as long as the vocabulary matches, as long as swamp and seed and match vocabulary, um, every week there is a data poll over the weekend from swamp into seed. So it's actually way more seamless. It doesn't require the whole project to be completed before it's actually migrated to seed. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we need to, uh, you know, my understanding of all these steps is fuzzy even when we were doing it all, but, um, you know, we need to, you know, we, I think basically we need to get the data on the portal as, you know, as rapidly as possible. Um, so the, you know, the water board's taking over the, we're transitioning to have the water board populate the portal, so. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe Anna, that's another thing that you could uh, coordinate to just you know try to make make that happen as quickly as possible with all the groups that are working on it. Yeah, that's that's on our to do list for that project for sure. Right. Okay. So Jay, I have one just I have an, an actual question for you. So the QA narrative that was historically done by the QA team for a, the particular projects. Is there any way that you can send me some examples? Um, trying to think of the last. It would have been a long time ago. Yeah. I might be able to help you with that, Jennifer. Okay, that would be great. That sounds Just good. Just so I have an idea of what the granularity needs to be. Okay, so Autumn will help you with that. Fantastic. All right. Thank you. So uh, this would be another good thing to have on our agenda to you know to, to keep track of. So you know, in at our next meeting in three months, um, okay. we can check in again and see if we need to okay. readjust any priorities. That would be perfect. I appreciate it. Great. Okay. I think Thank that, you. That's it. Thank you, Jennifer. All right. Next item. Demo time. Right. Uh, yeah, let me finish writing that action item. And then I can take over. And actually, Jay, if you can stop sharing your screen, and then I'll take over and share mine. Um, that'd be super helpful. Yeah, I so um, over the past, oh, I don't know how many months, uh, since March, I guess, um, the myself and, and Ali Dunn and Jay have been thinking about and working on updating the BOG pages and then also the program pages just to make sure that the content's easier to find, resources are easier to use, that sort of thing. Um, so since we're the BOG, we'll start with the BOG page. Um, and links to all of these pages were provided in the agenda. Um, and they'll also be provided in the notes. So I'm going to go relatively quickly through everything and just kind of show you how to find stuff. And then um, you can kind of dive in um, at your own leisure. So um, the general content of the BOG homepage and all really all the other pages is the same as it was. It just looks a little bit different. Um, the main uh, difference is on the BOG page, this navigation pane on the right-hand side. So instead of one long page where you scroll for days, you can kind of jump around um, to the specific things that, that you're looking for. So um, we mentioned earlier that the meeting notes are available for the November meeting. Um, and in the next, hopefully, week or so, I'll be adding the notes and the slides and the recording and all the other goodies um, to so the January meeting slot. Um, 
there's a contact page where people can go and join the email list. There's a link to the safety portal on the Water Quality Monitoring Council page. And then this is the, um, there's a swamp data dashboard that's in development that will have a bog specific um, page. And so when that's up and running, we'll probably have Michelle Tang, who's the rock star working on that in OEMA right now. We'll have her kind of come to the bog and show us all the goodies and then we'll link to it. I mentioned earlier that there's a relevant literature page. So thanks, big thanks to the folks that um, have been sending us um, consumption surveys that they think we, we all being the BOG community should know about. And so there's um, a table here where you can search for certain things, maybe, okay. I'll fix that. Um, and the table should be sortable. So you can sort by year or author. Um, but at the bottom, if you kind of look through and are like, hey, the report that I wrote isn't up there, or this one that I always reference isn't up there, um, this takes you to a Google form that's super easy to fill out. You don't need a Google account to use it, um, but you just kind of put in the information that you have and hopefully a uh, publicly accessible link to the document and um, I'll get it and add it to the page um, as I have time. So that's another resource that we can kind of build up over time. The thing to note is we won't be storing our monitoring survey uh, things there. Those are kind of down in this box down here, but anything um, else related to bioaccumulation, literature, white papers um, that are not produced by the BOG or the program could definitely be added here. Um, and then there's kind of quick links to the different survey pages that have been uh, restructured just so they're a little bit more consistent with each other. Um, and then there's useful links back to the, the BOG and the monitoring program. Um, and those exist for all of those guys. So I will stop there and um, since I'm sharing, I didn't see the comments or anything in the chat for um, questions. So feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question about the, the BOG pages at this point. Um, or Jay, if you see anything in the chat. Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm getting it. Not seeing anything. OK. People Great. love <laughs> People love it. See, it's a great system. It works for us every time. Hey, Anna, I just bookmarked it. Woohoo! <laughs> Perfect. Okay. I have a okay, feeling so I do. at this point, Carrie, you and I will be the, the most frequent users, <laughs> potentially. Uh, but someone else was jumping in? Yes, Jennifer Salisbury. I miss the, the quaps added to these pages. So those are on the the specific survey pages. Um, mm -hmm. So like for the long-term monitoring survey, there's the QAP there. Um, and Go to the coastal. It's like totally missing in the coastal. Yeah. So um, Autumn and Jay and I are already on that. Um, okay. So we'll be adding links to um, the coastal QAPs. I think the 2018 crop and then the 2020 amendment. Um, I'm hoping to submit that DIT request in the coming weeks. So those should be added there. Um, okay. Shortly. That's like our coastal, our coastal page is very sad. It's, it's yeah, stopped and, having anything added since 2010. <laughs> yeah. So, so we'll be working <laughs> together to update those. And for those folks that, um, aren't deep into the state systems. Um, there's accessibility um, mandates that, that we have to meet, which makes hosting things take a little bit longer. So even though Jay might send out the finalized report, get making it accessible and posting it, there might be a little bit of lag there. Um, but since this is a new process, it'll kind of be clunky at first, but I have great confidence that um, it'll be smoother and, and faster over time. So, but yes, thanks Jennifer. And if there's anything else that people see um, 
or want to see on any of these pages, feel free to shoot me an email um, and we can kind of add that into our update process as we move forward. This is Terry, you know, on the main main page, um, can we somehow make the portal more um, more highlighted so people go there first? Um, when people say portal, I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> Are they talking about the safe to eat portal? Yeah, the, or safe like, to eat portal. the safe to eat portal. Yeah. Yeah. So that's in the toolbox. Yeah. Um, and we can, you know, make that text bigger or highlight it more or something like I that. I mean, you know, unless you're a geek, right? You don't really care about the quaps and that kind of stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, uh, Joe Q Public coming in here. Well, you know, I, you know, I want to know where I can eat. And, right. and maybe they'll go to the council, but you know, I, I, it's just a suggestion. Yeah, no, and that's that's exactly what we're trying to do. So we can um, figure out a good way to highlight that and elevate that on all of the pages, really. Um, one of the changes that I did make to try and improve that process, Terry, was to add a useful links box on the um, right side of all of the program pages and survey pages. So there is a link to, you know, is it safe to eat fish from our waters on all of those is like the first iteration, but we can figure out how to, you know, make that a little bit more useful and awesome um, through future iterations. Um, so yeah, keep bringing great ideas like that to me. That'd be awesome. Um, the other, I think, major change that I wanted to point people to is that there's the bioaccumulation program page that actually didn't used to exist. Um, when you went on the swamp uh, statewide assessment page, it took you straight to the bog portal, um, which is great. But there is slight difference between um, the bog stuff and the program stuff. So I wanted to make that delineation a little bit more clear. Um, and I think with the realignment, that's the biggest difference at this point. Um, so there's now a new realignment page where we'll kind of, like I mentioned previously, we'll put updates and content products that are developed um, as, as we get them. At this point, like I said earlier, um, we're still in the beginning stages, so there's not a ton of stuff to add, but that timeline that we saw earlier um, is posted. And then um, down at the bottom, there's the product, so the realignment plan and that executive summary that I mentioned before. Um, those are provided as well. And then um, my contact information is on every page. So there's no escaping your, <laughs> your feedback, even if I wanted to, uh, which I don't. And then it also makes it easier to sign up to the BOG email list um, through the, the council email list. Um, and then again, those useful links. So if there are other things that, um, you know, you long-term BOG members and experts think which should be added to the useful links, content that should be added to the pages, um, you know, think about that in the back of your mind and, and send me recommendations and we can build these pages so they're a living resource for everyone interested in bioaccumulation for the state. And I feel like I've talked long enough, so <laughs> if there are any questions. Um, Anna, yeah. Anna, it's Jennifer. So in the bioaccumulation monitoring program, the one that has the background, mm -hmm. yes, that one, where it says in September 2016, not the background, the one that says surveys, sorry, background surveys. Background oh, bioaccumulation sure. monitoring surveys. Well, if it's a very specific wordsmithing revision, why don't you get no. email? No. No, it's not a wordsmithing. It's a hyperlink problem. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, send that to me via email and I'll get it fixed. Okay. Yes. Thanks. It's it's going to a PDF and not to a page. I'll send it right now. Yeah. Okay, Anna, there is a comment in the chat. Some uh excitement. Uh Tessa, Tessa appreciates the separation of the program versus BOG. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks, Tessa. Oh, it might be because you're talking about the program and I was on the realignment page. Anyway, um, yeah, if there, 
it's a weird system that we have where we don't get regular updates for you know broken links and things like that. Um, I'll try to find them, but more eyes is always better. So if you see an issue like Jennifer did, um, please send it my way so we can get it fixed. Ellen, awesome. did you did you hear my comment about relaying Tessa's comment? Yes, I did. Okay, okay, <laughs> making sure. Um, I'm feeling the love, Tessa. Thank you. <laughs> I want to follow up a little on on what Terry was asking for. Can you go back? I, and I, I lost track of which page that was exactly. Is it just the, was it this page? Yeah, so the, I mean, the safety e-portal is linked on all the pages, but we were talking about, I think the home page and the toolbox here. Yeah, maybe there's a way to, like it is kind of buried, like, you know, yeah. people might find the portal, but they'd have to really poke around. Maybe it could be made, like a separate little pop-up or box that says, you know, if you're interested in seeing data for your favorite fishing location or, you know, members of the public who want to just get information on your fishing location, go here. Um, yeah. It, to, you know, putting it in non-wonky terms for the people that really are just looking for, you know, to, get informed about where they fish. Yeah, I love that idea. We can make it as, instead of having like it within the toolbox, potentially make it its own box on the right with that sort of language and um, to, uh, to yeah. elevate it a little bit more. Yeah, yeah something, that, something that pops out more, yeah. Anna, I'm gonna send you a suggestion. This is Carrie, I do a lot of websites. I've done a lot of forms in my life. So um, I'm going to send you an email. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks so much. All right. Any other comments on the website? Uh, hi, Anna. This is Billy over at Moss. Um, hey, Billy. I was just wondering, do we have a document, uh, something that we could hand to the public uh, when we're out there? to direct them to this safety mm -hmm. portal? I don't know of one. Jay, do you know of one? If not, let's make It's one. a great idea for sure. Yeah, because yeah, we get asked all the time, you know, well, where's this data? And I try to, you know, let them know where it is and just something that we can just hand, well, I guess not COVID times, but after that we could hand it to them and they would navigate to it. Yeah, like a, like a brochure as simple or a, as a business card. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Just a thought. Yeah, I love that. Let's, you know, as collectively think about that and think about what we want on it and um, uh, send me send me ideas. I, I love that, especially while, while you guys are sampling that. Those are the people we want to reach, the people are already out there, right? So um, business card, brochure, we'll, we'll think about something and, and figure that out. Thank you. The Thanks. reason why I was thinking business cards is because if it's just a website, I don't, yeah, I don't know. It seems like it'd be pretty easy because you could update the website, but yeah, then someone has to have access to that. Yeah. yeah. And a card is a lot easier to just stuff in your pocket and keep track of. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, so Billy's getting a lot of uh, positive reaction to his idea. So <laughs> more than just silence. Yes. <laughs> um. Okay. So I think we're done with item eight. Yeah. On, on to item nine, and uh, Carrie Austin has some uh, in the chat some uh, item some items for item nine. Uh, she has a publication on 15 years of fish and water data from uh, oxygenation studies in the Guadalupe River watershed. Um, so this fits in with something that uh, an idea that Anna had of it might fit in with an idea Anna had of having 
guest speakers. Oh, uh, sorry, Jake. Can you share your share the slides again? Oh, okay. Or do you need me to do that? Why don't you go ahead and do it? Okay. I'm on it. Okay, keep keep going. I'll I'll share them in a second. So that's a, a you know that that's a possible uh, um, speaker on that. Um, and then another suggestion from Carrie. Uh, he's always been curious to know if 11 or 13 black bass is enough to characterize a lake. They've done some more thorough work in San Pablo Reservoir and a report may be available by the next meeting. So um, definitely of interest and uh, also, you know, something that a little little uh, presentation on it whenever that's ready. I think would be of interest to the group. So those are a couple of ideas for um, uh, you know just things that people should know about. Um, there's information. There's a link in the chat about the Guadalupe work, um, and that we capture the chat for the meeting summary, don't we, Anna? Uh, yeah, I add things into the from the chat, but I, there's not like a transcript. Oh. Okay. But I'll I've I've already added um the link that Carrie provided and I'll add the other comments into the meeting summary as well. Great. Okay. Um so, so, so let's let's uh, talk about potential uh, other topics for presentations at future meetings and then we'll review the action items. So Anna, why don't you give your a little background on that? The spiel? Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, Chad Laughlin actually um, sent me this recommendation and I think it's great. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love talking about program and process with you guys, but I think um, to increase attendance and to potentially get more people involved at the BOG, it might be a fun idea to kind of sprinkle in guest speakers of interesting bioaccumulation related work as time permits. Obviously this would not replace, um, you know, the necessary programmatic type um, updates that we all come to these meetings for. But um, if there are topics that, um, you know, folks wanna talk about, like what Carrie recommended in the chat, um, here are some other recommendations, uh, I think in the November, or the last meeting that we had, we talked a little bit about selenium. So getting more, uh, if people know of selenium centric scientists out there that could present um, the work in the, the latest science to inform our monitoring and respective research at the state board in the regions, I think that would be great. Um, and so the thought would be the speakers could give maybe a 20 minute talk with time for questions, flexible based on the speaker and the needs, obviously. Um, and we would just kind of add those in as people are available and um, and interested to, to come in. Um, and yeah, so I just wanted to get folks thoughts on that idea that I personally love. Um, if there's any like visceral, <laughs> No way we want to hear guest speakers. Uh, you know, let me know and we won't pursue that. I don't think that's the case, but um, you know, if that's someone's feeling, then we can we can think about that. Um, and then if you have, you know, you know, hey, I know this person that does great work and they're a great speaker, you can just shoot me an email, maybe connect me with the speaker and hey, figure it. out um, when that when that person can present. Go ahead, whoever was speaking. Was there a comment from somebody? Sounds like it was inadvertent. Yeah. But that's that's my spiel. Um, I don't know if anyone else has questions or chat if you want to add to that, but yeah, I'll say it. Yeah, I think we over the years we have done some of this, but uh, especially now that we're meeting more frequently, um, it provides more opportunities for this. So 
I think I, I agree. It's a good idea. And so does Wes in the chat. Thanks, Wes. <laughs> Okay. Wow. Your guys' silence is just like speaking volumes. Um, okay. And then the other wrap up thing was 2021 meetings. Jay, do you want me to give that spiel too? Or? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, over the past couple of years, I think meetings have been scheduled as needed, which means there's usually been some sort of pull to get everyone's availability. Um, now that they're a little bit more regular and we can think about them, you know, it's going to happen quarterly. Uh, at the last meeting, we talked about when the generally best times are for, for folks to meet. And I think it was like, you know, the end of May, the end of August, the end of October based on sampling, other, you know, uh, limitations that people have in, in terms of attending these, you know, meetings that are a commitment, right? Um, we've been together all morning. That means something. So um, we want to try something out where we schedule them for the last Wednesday of the month in May, August, and October. Um, similar to today, the, the, you know, we'll kind of block out 9.30 to 12.30, but um, adjust as needed by the agenda. And hopefully just like today, we'll be able to end early. Um, so I will be sending out uh, calendar invitations as like holds um, after today's meeting this afternoon. So people can kind of get stuff on your calendars. It, it feels weird sending out calendar invites for October, but we're gonna blink and we'll be there. So um, that's something we're gonna try out. If it doesn't work, then we'll switch back. But um, in terms of logistics, like Jay said, we've got a lot on our plate right now. So, you know, one less doodle poll or when to meet survey, one less email to try and schedule something. I think that'll be helpful for everyone. Um, so save the date for those. And then I'll be sending out calendar invitations um, later today. All right, and I can run over my list of action items. Um, I'm sure you've got a list too, Anna. Um, yeah, so I added some from the notes earlier. Let's go through for each item. Okay, you've got a good list. You go. Um, so it looks like for item two, the goal was for Jay to distribute the 2016 links report before slash around slash during <laughs> the next meeting. Before. Um, I didn't have anything else for item two. Right. For item three, um, distribute the plan for, I think the final, the sampling plan for final review was that also by the next meeting, Jay? That's something that I assume. Uh, no, I'm going to do that next week, and I'll okay. send it out by email. We'll, we'll, we'll take care of that by email. Um, and then Autumn will use that to develop the QAP, um, which once that's done, of course, we'll send it out to everyone. Um, and then Jay, Autumn, and I will kind of huddle and talk about the fun budget and, and things like that and um, work with the regions offline to, to kind of get a better, more clear idea of the lake prioritization that we talked about earlier. For item four, um, again, I'll circle back with Jay and Autumn about the realignment budget. Um, Terry, Terry had an item to send out the lakes list, which I think he already did before we I even added this to the slide. So go Terry. Um, and then Autumn to kind of figure out how far the budget can go once we figure out the budgets and all that good stuff. Um, for AB 762, Greg or myself or someone else from the team will try and provide um, updates at future BOG meetings semi-regularly as needed. Um, and then same for the realignment, I'll keep y'all posted on progress and achievements and. Um, you know, sticking points that we might need the bogs help with. And then 
for the tissue data prioritization, um, we talked about that obviously, and Jennifer will process the file the files with like what we discussed in terms of you know the Delta um, files first, and then the 2019 Fish Lake files that that Jay mentioned. Others. I had a couple of other things under item seven. Yeah. Uh, so so far, your list has been been great and had everything that I had and more. Um, but uh, a couple of things for you uh, under item seven, coordinating between BOG and uh, the integrated report on schedules. Yes. And then also coordinating about getting our the BOG data onto the portal, We're trying to expedite that. And then we'll, we uh, want to have a standing item uh on the tissue data sets at our at the future meetings it could be an update it doesn't have to be a full item but you know one or one or the other awesome anna uh -huh. do you know if there's like or jay do you know if there's something extra that needs to be done and for that data to actually be pulled from season Uh, this, the stuff we set up it pulls the data directly from seed in to, to just pop based it. on the, is it just based on the, um, the, oh my gosh, project codes? Uh, like yeah, I'm not totally sure, but I think so. Okay. Okay. Awesome. And then and then Autumn was going to uh, help Jennifer find a QA narrative to use as a model. Jay, I think you actually had put them in the appendix or the attachments in your final reports for all of those years that we did that. And if I remember correctly, the last year that that was done was the 2014 low concentration lakes. Yeah, that sounds right. So unfortunately, I don't have individual files outside of your reports is what I'm trying to say. OK. OK. Anything else for item 7J or anyone nope. else that, that caught, caught them? Great. Um, so for item 8, for the portal updates, I'll add the meeting notes, make the revisions that people send me. Um, and the recordings onto the meetings page. And then if an action item for all of you um, is if you come across literature or white papers that think you think should be added to the page that other people would find in interesting, um, please submit it via this um, bit.ly link or just going to the page. Um, note that like if you send me a PDF and the, the literature is still behind a paywall because scientific literature is lame like that. Um, I won't actually attach the PDF for a number of reasons. Um, I'll link to the to the paywall, unfortunately, um, just to help prevent lawsuits and copyright issues and things like that. Um, but if there's something on there, hopefully I can get a copy and people can say, hey, I want something. Um, and I might be able to, to send it to you. Um, and then for the item nine, oh, I forgot to revise that. Wah, wah. Um, for wrap up and adjourn, um, again, everyone shoot me emails with speaker and topic recommendations for guest speakers for future uh, BOG meetings. I will send out calendar invites for the 2021 meetings as soon as we hang up this phone call. Um, and then I'll, I'll send out the meeting notes um, for today's meeting, hopefully soon, but it, it takes a little bit of time to, to process all the things, make sure we have everything recorded, um, but hopefully in the next week or so. Um, and was there anything else, Jay, others? Yeah, I have a couple more little ones. Um, one is that I'm hoping that you can lead is uh, Billy's suggestion to have a business card or brochure. Mm -hmm. And then Carrie asked me to email email out that one page summary of the long-term plan and I'll do that. Okay. 
Yeah, and what what we'll do maybe for um, the brochure or business cards, I'll try and have something um, if I can get it done and we can kind of discuss via email, we can do that. Otherwise, I'll shoot to have something by the next meeting and we can um, discuss and get feedback on, on that. Cool. Nice job capturing all this. Yeah. And I'll um, revise these slides with the other items that we talked about just now before I post it on the on the web so everyone can kind of have have the same information. Um, and then I think this is the last slide, but again, the next meeting will be on Wednesday, May 26, 9.30 to 12.30. And I do realize that for folks that are gonna be out in the field, sampling midweek isn't ideal. Um, it's another reason why we wanna record these meetings. So if something really um, that needs your attention, um, you, you're able to tune in. And we're also trying to provide much more detailed meeting notes so people can really kind of um, dive in as they can. Um, and I just wanted to thank everyone for tuning in and, um, you know, engaging today and uh, look forward to talking to you in May. Yeah, thanks everybody. And thanks for all the enthusiastic support. <laughs> <laughs>